Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about using permutations and combinations. We're going to assume a little bit of familiarity with the fundamental counting principle and also factorial notation. The first question we're going to address is what happens if you want to make an arrangement of a set of objects, but you don't want to use all of them? This results in permutations. Then we're going to ask what happens if you want to select some of the objects, but we don't want to arrange them. This is called combinations. Then we're going to talk about the guidelines on which method of counting to use, the fundamental counting principle, permutations, or combinations, or possibly when to use multiple methods, and also how to use your calculator to do these calculations. Let's start with permutations. In the context of counting problems, arrangement and permutation mean the same thing. The number of permutations of n objects taken r at a time is written npr, where the n and the r are subscripts. For example, you might have a problem that asks you, first, second, and third place ribbons are to be awarded at the end of a track event. There are seven participants in the final round. How many possible ways can the ribbons be awarded? This is considered an arrangement because it's different for Sam to get first place, Maria to get second place, and Ishmael to get third place, than for Maria to get first, Ishmael to get second, and Sam to get third, for example. We're taking seven runners, taking three at a time. I didn't tell you how to calculate a permutation, but if you were to apply the fundamental counting principle, you could count the number of ways to award the first place, which would be seven, the number of possibilities for awarding second place, which would be six, because once first place is decided, then that same person can't get second place, and then the number of ways to award third place ribbon, which would be the five remaining candidates. If you multiply the number of ways to do each part of the task, 7 times 6 times 5, you get the total number of ways to do the task, 210. This is using the fundamental counting principle, and it gives you an idea of how to do a permutation. To calculate a permutation, one way is to start with the number of objects, which in this case is 7 people, and to multiply 3 factors together reducing by one each time, seven times six times five. You can also rewrite this expression seven times six times five in a special way. But if you took seven factorial, which is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, and divided it out by four factorial, all of the factors less than five would cancel out and you'd be left with just the seven times six times five. We observe that because we'd like to have a formula that involves the seven and the three in the seven P three permutation notation. Notice that four is just the leftovers when you take seven and subtract three. So another way of thinking of this is take seven factorial and divide it by seven minus three factorial. So you have an actual formula for permutations. In fact, your formula can be written in two ways. You can think of it as starting with n for npr, the number of arrangements of n distinct objects taken r at a time. Start with the factor n and reduce by one each time until you have r factors, but that's kind of hard to look at that formula. Or you can think of it as n factorial over n minus r factorial. I personally like my students to just go ahead and use the calculator option, but it is good to see where the formula comes from. So for example, if you're asked to evaluate each permutation and you're given 5p3, the number of ways of arranging five objects taken three at a time, you can do it using the formula. 5p3 is equal to 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, which is 5 factorial over 2 factorial. By the way, just to remind you, for factorial just counts all the way down to 1. You multiply all those factors together, right? And so if we divide that out, it's 5 times 4 times 3, which is 60. Interestingly, 6p6 is 6 factorial divided by 0 factorial. And remember, 0 factorial is by definition just 1. 
So in fact, 6p6 is the same thing as just 6 factorial, or 720. In general, npn, if you have the same number in both places, that's telling you to start with n and count down by 1 n times, which gives you n factorial, n all the way down to 1. But most of the time, we're not going to just say, oh, calculate 7p3. We're going to say, give you a word problem, right? So how many four-digit numbers can be written using the numbers from the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 if repetition is not allowed. This is an important component, if repetition is not allowed. For permutations, you're arranging objects and they're unique objects, so repetition is never allowed. So you can't use permutations unless you have this particular characteristic. Since repetitions are not allowed, and since order is important, we can use permutations for this problem. We have one, two, three, four, five digits to select from, and we're creating four digit numbers. So we are going to, from the five objects, select four. This can be calculated as five factorial divided by five minus four factorial, or five factorial divided by one, which is 120. So there are 120 four digit numbers that can be written using digits from this set. How many ways can you select two letters followed by three digits for an ID if repeats are not allowed? We've worked this problem or one similar to it in the past in my class. We used the fundamental counting principle. We broke the problem down into a five part task and counted how many ways to complete each part. First, we picked the first letter, which there are 26 letters in the alphabet. And then since repetition is not allowed, there were 25 possibilities for the second letter. Then we picked the digits. In our system of counting numbers, there are 10 digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So for the first digit, we have 10 possibilities. But since repetition's not allowed, once we use up that first digit, we only have 9 left to choose from, and then 8 for the third. If you multiply 26 times 25 times 10 times 9 times 8, you get 468,000 possible IDs that have this construction. The reason we're working this problem right now, though, is because we want to see how permutations could be used. So we could also break this problem down in a different way. Rather than think of it as a five-part task, we're going to think of it as a two-part task. First, determining the set of two letters that will be used, and second, determining the set of three digits and the order in which they're going to appear. Now, since repetition's not allowed and order matters, we can use a permutation for each part. To choose the two letters would mean that from the alphabet of 26 letters, we're picking two and arranging them. So part one would be 26P2. For the three digits, out of the 10 digits, 0 through 9, in our number system, we would be picking three of those and arranging them. So part 2 would be 10P3. Calculating 26P2 and 10P3, we would get 650 times 720, which also is a total of 468,000. You can use the formulas that we just discussed a minute ago to find these, but I'm gonna show you how to do this on your calculator. So here's the TI30X2S calculator NPR function. This is the one I use in my class. It's similar to a lot of the Texas Instruments calculators. So let's take a look. Step one, you would type 17 into your calculator. Step two, you're going to select PRB, the PRB button, and I'm pointing to in the picture there. And when you select it, you'll see NPR appear on your screen. It's already underlined. There are actually three functions on the screen, NPR, NCR, and factorial. But well, we're doing NPR, so since it's already underlined, you would just hit equals. And then what you should see on your screen is this, 17 NPR. And then you would type 10 
and then you would hit enter. Now this is actually a really huge number, but I did this on purpose because I wanted to point out if you're following along on your calculator, what your screen is showing means 7.0572 times 10 to the 10th power, which is actually an approximation using scientific notation. When an answer is written in scientific notation like that, it means that this number, this decimal is being multiplied by uh, 10 to the 10th power and that has the effect of moving the decimal 10 places to the right. So right here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. 9 and 10 we would have to add two zeros. So this is actually 7057290240 this is not an exact answer. More than 70 billion ways if you uh, wanted to take 17 objects and arrange 10 of them. More than 70 billion ways to do that. So if you see that scientific notation on your calculator, that means that the number was too big for your calculator to give you an exact answer. But most of the time, it'll give you an exact answer. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That'll help other students to find the video.